But today, oh my God, hope you guys got your notepads out, your cordernos. That's what a notepad is in Espanol. Your plumas or lapis. Yes, right. Your pen or pencils. And get ready to take notes on this young man. This guy has been with us for a few years. He is a leader. He's the one who keeps Fresno up, up and going. He was a fire captain before he saw AC in it and he was losing his house. He tells that story. I'm just sharing what he, he shares publicly. So I'm not putting his business out there, but he saw this and it changed his whole world around. He got started, rolled his sleeves up and, 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 and just growing up an incredible business. And I mean, he's not that far away from Rizzo Vice President and I can't wait to celebrate his promotion. I, I just can't wait because he's deserving of it. Uh, like I said, he lives out in Fresno, California and he's open to help anybody. You know, I, people talk about because I do these calls for everybody, he's the same way, him and his lovely wife. And I mean, they roll their sleeves up and they get in the trenches. Yeah, they're not out there just talking it, they're in the trenches with it. Without further ado, one of the, an outstanding, a sharp individual, uh, just a caring and loving person, one and only regional director, Mr. Chris King. Thank you so much, sir. Guys, thank you guys for being on the call today. A uh, big thank you to Mr. Thomas for what he does for us here so we can get on these leadership calls and hopefully learn something, but more so is behind the scenes is the ACN and what our co-founders do for us uh, night and day, uh, our military, our police, our fire, everybody who basically takes care of us so we can live our lives and to go out and grow our business. So big thank, uh, thank you and shout out. So, uh, but with that being said, guys, uh, Mr. Thomas, thank you, sir. It's just like uh, everything he said is true. He wasn't lying. <laughs> But here's the thing, if it wasn't for Mr. Thomas and doing what he does and being the person he is, the leader he is, and the, um, I you want to say a coach or model or mentor, um, a lot of us would, would not be where we are today. And I want to thank him very much for, for all of that. So thank you, sir. Really, really appreciate you. So letting some people in. So guys here, let's get to this here. Bear with me. <laughs> as, I, as I locate everything. So, okay, today I wanted to talk about uh, leadership and uh, the ugly truth about leadership. Okay, so all y'all, you know, a lot of people think, you know, being leadership is cool. Like, you you know, John Maxwell on stage, you get to see him a couple of times and that leadership he brings to the table. You're like, oh, cool. It's like, where do you find that? Where do you go shopping for that? How do you get that? And you know what? There's an ugly truth behind all that leadership and that knowledge he has. There's a lot of truth um, uh, or knowledge and truth and suffering behind Mr. Thomas's knowledge. So there's an ugly truth behind all that, guys. So leadership, what, what is it? Um, why are we so short of leaders and leadership today? Um, why do so many people want to lead yet are reluctant to be leaders? You know, why, why is that? And I, and I think I might have found the answer. So if you guys bear with me, I'm going to show you. And I've got it on video. So I think I found out why a lot of people are reluctant to be leaders. So In any career, in any business, if you know how to be a leader, you're going to be successful. Chances are most of you have already been a leader. For example, take a look at this list. I want each of you to stand up. Go ahead, stand up. As I read off these roles, I want you to sit down if you've ever been one of those roles. President. CEO, mentor, older sibling, parent. <laughs> See, I'm only halfway through the list and most of you are already sitting down. Let's finish the list and I'm sure we'll get to you too. Manager, <laughs> team lead, chief. Captain. I, a nasty land lovers. Okay, um, have you ever been first in a race? Ever given directions to someone? Oh, I got one. Have you ever been the first to cross the crosswalk? There we go. Um, 
Have you ever given anyone any advice? <laughs> Made a suggestion. <laughs> Done service for someone. <laughs> Complimented someone. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? That's fine, that's fine. You haven't been a leader. I'm sure you've seen examples of leaders. Do you have any older siblings? Okay, <laughs> parents. Okay, <laughs> um, have you ever been older than someone? <laughs> no. Okay, that's impossible. How old are you? <laughs> have you ever had a teacher? Uh, uh. You are a grown man. How have you not had a teacher? <laughs> you know, hey, me, I'm a teacher. Great, I am your example of a leader. So we all haven't been leaders yet? That's okay, we're here to learn. You may sit. <laughs> As the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once said, leadership is what separates us from the animals. To be human is to be a leader. If you've never been a leader, you've never really been human and there's no point to your life. <laughs> oh. So I kind of got. So hopefully you've been a leader there somewhere, guys. So none of us were in that shop pod, but I just we saw that and Rose brought that to my attention and I was dying, so I had to show it. So all right, let's get going here, guys. So uh, basically, I'm in a position to lead, and understand that the word is position. Sometimes we get promoted. And it's not by anybody's fault, but our, but our own, so to speak, because we can go get 30 points and be in, be in a position. So I'm in a, a position to lead, uh, much like everybody else is on this call. So uh, do you know what kind of a leader you are? Like, am I doing this right? Uh, are people following me? Uh, do people even want to follow me? So these are the questions that need to be answered. And um, so you got to start thinking outside the fishbowl. Mr. Thomas talks about this all the time, thinking outside the box. Um, I always call it a fishbowl because I'm going to get, break this down for you. You can see if you take that fishbowl and you set it off in front of you, you can see everything that's going on around it. Okay. It gives you a better vision, a clarity. Okay. So that's what I'm talking. Get outside the fishbowl. Look at it from afar. This will give you the whole picture. So we used to do this in fire. We'd go out on these huge fires and I can't see what's on the other side of the ridge. I don't know what's burning. And Mr. Thomas is on my crew. And Miss Williams is on my crew, and uh, we're on our engine. And unless we take someone from our engine and walk up the hill to go look at it, we can't see it. So we use aerial views. Now they're using uh, drones a lot. So they're doing a lot of stuff now to give you a bigger picture, bigger clarity. A lot of businesses will do this too with their with their monies, where they're going, what's going on. So you you can't just go sell things. You got to know what the market is. That's having clarity. Okay, so. But for me to do this, the thing outside the box, I, I took into account a couple of books I read. And uh, one of the books, uh, they're both by John Maxwell. He's got some amazing books on leadership, how to be a leader, how to become a leader, how to show others how to be a leader, how to grow leaders, everything. But the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Okay, the very, and I think that's what it was. It's, it's out on loan right now. Otherwise, I'd have it up here with a couple of other books that I have, of John Maxwell's I have here. Uh, um, <clears throat> But on the back of that book was a survey, and there was multiple questions. So the idea, what was to do, was to print that out and give it to people. Okay, so I had to give the survey to, like, say, say, uh, uh, um, a Pam, a parent, um, a friend, um, someone I'm in business with, someone I work with, someone that I know doesn't really like me. So I know who likes me. So the idea is to get a range of people, feed, people's feedback. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, I use that book. And the other book I was we referenced here for some of this stuff is The Five Levels of Leadership by John Maxwell. Great books. Now, this book was kind of a slap in the face for me because I'd already been a, 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 a supervisor. I was always in a, already in a position of supervisor. Uh, not necessarily that I led well, but uh, the, the five levels of leadership, one through five, it's like before you read the book, come on, admit it. You're going to categorize yourself on where you think you are. That's just what we do as humans. And I thought, you know what? I've done this. I've been out there. 
Um, when, before I got back in the fire, um, I was a supervisor of about 1,500 correct uh, convicts and about 40 cops. That was my responsibility. Okay. And I thought, man, I've done this. I'm probably a 3.5, maybe a four because of my method, what I thought I was. Inside my fishbowl, I thought I was a 3.5, maybe a four. After I read the book, uh, the humbling thing was that I was maybe a two if I stretched it. You guys hear that? Maybe a two after reading the book. Um, you think that's a little frustrating? Thinking you're someplace else and you get your feet cut out from underneath you? This wasn't someone, this wasn't Mr. Thomas saying, hey, we need to have a conversation. This was me reading a book that I bought. But if I paid for the book, it should be a little bit nicer to me, right? So here's the thing. Understand this, that if you don't go to the gym, you don't get stronger. If you don't practice, you don't get better, okay? So whose fault is it a lot of times? So let me give you a scenario here. If you take a child who's crawling, right? They're just getting off crawling and put them on the floor. What are they going to do? They're going to crawl all over the place. And they're going to, and you guys have seen this. Everybody's seen this. The child gets stuck between the ottoman and the sofa. Can't move. Can't figure out how to get out. Child starts crying. Why is the child crying? Because it's frustrated like we get sometimes because it doesn't know how to get out or what to do. You know, a lot of times people go over there, instead of showing the child how to get out, they pick the child up, okay? So let me ask you a question. Was it the environment's fault the child got stuck? Because the child thinks that it's the environment. Inside my bubble, I thought it was the environment. It wasn't me, it was the environment. But no, it was a child. The child continued to do certain things to stay stuck. So be aware of that. Is it the environment or is it you? Because the environment is the same for all of us. Mr. Thomas goes to the casino. There's people in there doing what they do. I go an hour later. There's still those people in there doing what they're going to do. The environment's the same. The only difference was Mr. Thomas was there and then I was there. That's the only difference. The environment, it was, it was me. Okay? So understand that. Make sure it's not <laughs> the environment. And it could be you, all right? So what did I need to do? I needed to go outside my bubble because it's all about getting better every single day. So I comprised a list. I asked us the, the same basic questions. And I asked four different people the same basic questions. So one was a friend, one was our relationship coach, one was our business coach, and one was a business associate, okay? So with that being said, here's the questions. What do you see as a leadership strength that I have? And let them answer. And that'll kind of get your ego going a little bit. Yeah, you're this, you're that. And like, hey, cool. We're on the right note here. This is the right, this is the, this is the right question. I'm feeling pretty good. Right? Here's the next question. What do you see as a leadership weakness that I have? That was a hard one. All right. And now here's on both parts is where can I improve in these areas? So three questions. Okay. Now, you guys want to know, let me move this out of the side here a little bit. You guys kind of want to know what some of the people said about me? A little bit. Mr. Thomas is shaking his head. All right. Here's what they said. So, here is my, our relationship coach. Um, she says, I'm a great connector, um, that I uh, am good talking to people, creating conversation. And um, those are some of the strengths. And I was like, hey, cool. And as, here's some of the weaknesses, that I don't stay focused. This is business. We talk about focus all the time. I don't stay focused. Sometimes I'm all over the place. And that was kind of hard to hear. And, but here's a cool thing. What do you recommend I do to fix it? 
And she says, stay focused, create a schedule. So I had a fix of what she said was my weak spots. Okay. That's why I put these questions in this scenario. All right. And then, uh, so here's our business coach. She's a little more extensive. Um, personal, I connect well and I explain things well. She's heard me talk about the business because uh, we're at the, our uh, networking group together. And if I talk about the business or, or services, she says, I've explained things very well. So I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. That's a good, that's a good thing to have. And then she says, um, improvements, right? Here we go. Keeping on a schedule will get more tasks done. Create focus to, com there it is, that word again, com create focus to complete tasks. Come up with, okay, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a tough one. I, I come up with excuses to not do tasks. I didn't see that one coming. That was a tough one. But what's that last question? Where can I approve? This is why we, we use her. She's really good about this stuff. Um, she talked about creating a schedule and teaching myself how to stay focused on topics before I go on. Find a task. If my task is ABC today, then you focus on doing ABC before anything else. Nothing else comes up. Okay, good. She, another fix. Okay. Now, Here's a third person. Here's a good friend. Um, and it was the strengths. was people, person, social, um, get along with everybody. Again, you guys seeing, a, you seeing the same thing? Okay. Here's the uh, improvements, room for improvement. I need to have more of a non-negotiable attitude. Be more direct. I'm too easygoing. Better posture. All right. Um, What's my fix? Personal development. They think I have more of a, I'm a retired, uh, I have a retired schedule, not a business schedule. Okay, more structure and not have that retired mentality. Here's the fourth person. Here's my business um, associate. Uh, my strengths. Re very relatable, easy to talk to and approach, confident, fair and biased in building, uh, in building relationships. Cool. Weaknesses, not really aggressive enough. Not really aggressiveness for business. Ow, I'm in business and now I'm not aggressive enough. Fix. Become accountable, just do it. Assert yourself, be more assertive. You guys see a pattern, four different people and basically the same thing through all four, okay? A few, a few differences, very minor, but still. But see guys, that's outside my fishbowl. If, if I'm not looking for people outside my fishbowl that spend time around me, I'm a hamster on a wheel. We all are, it's just how it is. Um, it's it just what it is. So if you guys are looking to see what kind of a leader you are, those are three questions you have. Get started. You can use a phone. You can call, uh, text. Hey, you got time. You see them in person, go have coffee. Find out where you are. If we don't evaluate where we are, how do we know where we are? How do we can get better? How we can do better and how we can grow a bigger team. If no one's telling you that, you're in a fog for most of us. I mean, there's some people that got it down and have a schedule and are on point. Keep it up. The, other, the rest of us are trying to get there. Okay. So, guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you if you think this was easy, you're horribly wrong. Doing these three questions like this, this will expose you. It'll cause you to question what you thought you knew and basically make you feel completely vulnerable. Okay, That's, those aren't good feelings, but they're growing feelings. Okay, they're feelings of growth. That's huge. Okay. Now, 
before I go, I got a video of good leadership. But the surprising part is who it comes from. Do not take counsel of your fears. Do not take counsel of your fears. So I really enjoyed that, that video, guys. I hope you did too. Uh, it said a lot without saying anything. Um, I used to think that if you did something long enough, that uh, if I did something long enough, that I would get better and uh, eventually get better results. Uh, however, if you you didn't if you don't identify your shortcomings, if I didn't identify my shortcomings and my issues, how can I learn how to fix them or strengthen them? Okay, um, because of reading multiple books, going to training, listening to audibles, I believe that people can spend hours, months, and sometimes years of their lives trying to discover some of the reasons of why they do what they do. Okay, now some professionals. I believe that you, you don't need to know why you do certain things, okay, and exhibit shortcomings and, and issues. But the important thing is to identify the shortcoming or the issues and learn how to work through it and start correcting them. That's leadership, okay? Know this. You're here today in this business, so you are in a leadership position. Whether you wanted it or not, it's your choice to fill a leader role now but understand this, God has provided you with this opportunity. Now do something today and every day to become the better leader people are praying for. For what goes in your ears and is seen by your eyes will spill from your mouth. Mr. Thomas, that's all I have, sir. I appreciate you so much. Wow. Folks, I want to say this to Mr. Chris King, and I want to thank him for being so transparent with all of us. 
Why, why are we so scared to be transparent? Why, why we keep hiding? He was so transparent. He gave you the pluses. His plus was he knows what he has to do. His negative was this, or is he willing to do it every day? But once you come to self-discovery of what your weakness is, you work on. And that's all he's telling you. You know, you don't need no sight. You know, you already know. So work on it. Get her done. Wow. I have a question. What will your pluses and your minuses be is what he's saying to you. 